Hey y'all, I am not feeling super well. <laughs> I'm a little under the weather. And I was gonna try to think of something cute, like bzzz, like because today's video is a bee themed video. And I thought I couldn't think of anything funny or cute. So instead of let's talking about it, let's be about it and let's get crafting. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. We're gonna see how far I can get through this video with my voice. <laughs> But I'm taking these paint stir stick leftover pieces and I'm just using some wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm gluing them together to make a little bit bigger piece. And I'm using clamps that I got from Dollar Tree to hold them all together while it dries. I'm going to be using some Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze to paint this little piece and I've got Captain's help today. I just gave it kind of a light coat, and I think I actually did two coats, but I didn't mind that some of the wood was still showing through. I wasn't trying to get a complete coverage on this. I've had these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree in my stash for quite a while, and it's on this weird, like, waxy paper, and so it's it doesn't transfer very easily. <laughs> I had to really work at this one, and you had to hold it in place because it kept trying to slide around and move, so I just did the best I could. I'm going to actually transfer the same design. There's two of these same design on the page. I'm going to do one on each side and that's it. <laughs> I told y'all this was an easy one and this is going to look super cute. It'll be a great filler on a tear tray. So I'm going to be making a little palette sign, but first I have to make the B that's going to go on it. So I'm taking a jumbo craft stick. I got mine from Lowe's, but you can get them from Walmart and I'm sure Hobby Lobby sells them as well and I'm painting them yellow. At this time, I didn't have the maize paint that I love so much, so I used a different color yellow. And then I took two hearts, two wooden hearts that I had in my stash, and I painted those white. And I took this palette, little palette thing, <laughs> wood piece that I got from Dollar Tree and just painting on some Waverly Wax in the color antique and then wiping it off. And then to make the bee's body that those two um, craft sticks have dried, and I'm painting them up, uh, putting them together, and gl gluing them together, and then I'm painting one end of the little thing um, black. So that's going to be the head of the bee, and then I'm going to paint on some black lines for the bee's stripes, and then I'm going to use some hot glue to glue on those two hearts. Those are going to become the bee's wings, and then I'm going to use some. Um, Oh, some black paint. I'm <laughs> showing you this first. I'm going to take some black paint and paint on the bottom of the B. And I didn't have anything for the little pointy part, so his little stinger. So I just painted that on. And then I took some gray paint and I'm giving some definition to those wings. I took my Cricut and I made a decal that said BU. And ordinarily, vinyl doesn't stick that well to waxed wood, but it's sticking so far so good on this one because I made this like I think last year and just making sure that's pressed down carefully and this is how it turned out I think it is super cute I just love I just love everything about it this video is part of the talented creators collaboration and it is hosted by DIY with Aria Lowly D's creations and the co-host is farmhouse frugally and the guest host is lovely moments creating I'm going to have a link to all of their channels in the description box below, as well as the playlist. I sure hope you check it out because I think you'll find a lot of fun inspo. Y'all, this is one of my favorite pieces, and I'm not sure if I either gave it away or have just misplaced it or something, but I can't find it. Anyways, we cut this little gnome shape out of some wood, and I say we because obviously it was Marvin cutting it, not me. And then I took some carbon paper, and I am kind of sketching on, tracing on some of the details of this gnome so that way I can, when I go back later to kind of do it, <laughs> I know where things are supposed to go and I'm not having to guess. And what I did was just take a picture of a gnome and printed it out and that's what I used as my little stencil. This is his nose, this little half round would be that I painted peach, kind of like peaches, peach-ish color. And then I am painting the hat, even though it's going to be covered up for the most part. And I am painting this little stick here. Oh, that was for the sign. And so anyways, I'm painting the hat, but I'm putting Mod Podge on it because I'm Mod Podging this fabric on there. So I didn't want anything else to show. That's why I painted it first. 
And now I'm just kind of touching it up a little bit. And now I'm going to start working on the rest of his body. And I'm just being careful because, like I said, I've traced around where I'm supposed to be painting. And, yeah, that's what I'm doing right there. Now I'm adding a little bit more detail to his, um, like, beard area. And this is his body. And so I'm just using some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And I cut out this decal that says, Be Happy. And it's going to be a little sign that he's holding. I used hot glue to glue on that half wood round piece. And that's his nose. And so you kind of place it on top of the fabric or his hat area and on top of his beard. Then here's this little sign that says, Be Happy. And I took two or the ends of a um, jumbo craft stick, and that's going to be his little shoes. And I say it's a he because I just, it's a boy. So there you go. So I'm just gluing on those little happy half <laughs> end pieces, and now I'm going to paint them to kind of look like shoes. And y'all, that's it. This is how it turned out. I, I did use the end of a paintbrush to make those little button circles for him. But that's it. Super cute, super easy, and I made it all myself. Well, with Marvin's help. <laughs> I'm calling this two DIYs because you can use it several different ways, but I'm making it to go together. So I'm taking some Waverly Wax in the color Antique, and I am painting on, and then I'll be using that damp scrap piece of cloth to wipe off the excess, and then I'll let it dry completely. I used my Cricut to cut out this honeycomb this bee honeycomb decal, and I'm just weeding out the inside pieces. Then I use some paper transfer tape, and I'm going to use that to apply the decal to the wood piece. Now, I will tell you, as I mentioned before, the vinyl does not stick to wood that has been, that you use Waverly Wax on, or a wax product on. It just doesn't stick very well. So you kind of have to press it down and you kind of have to just be extra careful with it. But yeah, it, it works out fine, but you just have to take a little extra care with it. So then as you'll see, I'm just kind of positioning it, making sure it is where I want it to be. And then I'm going to start to remove the transfer tape, but it lifts up a little bit. I kind of have to fidget with it just a little bit, but it ends up working. Then I take some Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze, and I take a Dauber sponge brush that I got from Dollar Tree, and I'm just dabbing, pouncing up and down on the wood piece to make that stencil, make that honeycomb pattern come out, come live, come out, <laughs> to make the honeycomb pattern. Then I just pull back that vinyl and reveal that honeycomb pattern turns out really cute. So this is how it looks and it is, um, it's just how I want it. You could use this as a background piece for something. You could use it just as a filler piece on a tear tray, anything you want. Then I took that smaller piece and I'm using some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm using my chippy brush to give it a good coat of paint, but not full coat of paint because I want it to look kind of rustic, kind of old. I did cut out a another stencil. I just, you, to make a stencil, you just basically cut out a decal and you just take out the, the part that you want to paint. And it's the words, let it be. And I'm just trying to position it where I want to on there. Now, a trick to have crisp lines is to go over that stencil with your base coat first. Then you go back with the color that you're wanting to use. I'm using wherever the chalk paint, the color I think it's called Snow White, and um, just, like I said, pouncing up and down with that little sponge dauber brush that I got from Dollar Tree. The wood I'm using is not super smooth, so when I pull back the stencil, it, it wasn't as crisp as maybe it could have been. Even though I did that little extra prep work of doing that base coat down, it still was not super crisp, but in my defense, <laughs> The wood was really not very smooth, even though I had sanded it really well. It still wasn't that smooth, but it all works out in the end. I cut out this little B decal with my Cricut, and now I'm just going to put that on the bottom of the, kind of reverse weeded it. I put it on the transfer tape first, 
and then I weeded it out. And now I'm applying it to the wood piece. And then I'm going to paint it with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Snow White. Just pouncing up and down with that sponge dauber brush. This is really easy to do, but again, the wood's not smooth, so it, it's a little, little choppy when I'm done, but you know, it works out. I didn't show this, but I did add some yellow to it. And like I said, it turned out super cute. I love it, but I love it even more paired with that honeycomb piece that I made. And I'm going to be using it as a set on my tear tray, but I, I just love how it looks. I think it looks so cute. I think it looks beautiful. <laughs> All right, here's another one that I did. I think, like I want to say this video came out last year. Maybe it was the year before. Anyways, I painted that little wood piece with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink. And I am using some Mod Podge on this larger wood piece because I'm going to Mod Podge this fabric on. I think I got the fabric from Hobby Lobby, if I remember correctly. Then I'm taking my little rotary cutter and I'm cutting off the excess fabric. And this is before I learned the heat activated Mod Podge method. So I'm just adding a little bit of Mod Podge and then slowly pressing that fabric down and then lifting it up, adding some more Mod Podge and slowly pressing that fabric down. I'm trying to avoid wrinkles and stretching the fabric too much. Then with my Cricut, I made a decal that said, be kind. And I'm just attaching that to the front of that little wood piece that I painted black. Then I'm adding um, little cubes. I'm pretty sure I got these from Dollar Tree and I'm adding it to the back of the sign so that it'll stand up. And then I'm hot gluing the little beacon sign to the front. And this is how it turned out. It is, I just think it's adorable. How are y'all liking the video so far? I love bee themed decor, so um, I really like this video. <laughs> and I like the projects that I made. And I hope you are enjoying them so far too. But if you wanna connect outside of YouTube, I run a crafting group on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I'm gonna have a link to that in the description box below. I hope you check it out. Now let's get back to the video. Surprise, surprise, we're making a book stack. And I am staining this with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. Yes, Anna, if you're watching. It's Waverly Wax in the color antique. She had said, oh, mom, you, mama, you always say Waverly Wax in the color antique, which I do. But if you're watching this video for the first time and you've never seen my videos before, maybe you're wondering, oh my gosh, what beautiful brown color is that? And I'd say it's Waverly Wax in the color antique. So I'm staining all of these, even though I'm going to go back later and paint some of them. But I just, I like the color that it comes out and how it makes the wood look. So that's what I'm doing. Then I'm painting the face of the books three different colors. I'm painting this one with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Maze. I'm pretty much using that same yellow throughout the video. And then I'm painting this one with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Ink. And I'm painting this one with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Snow White. Now the top one is going to be the one that I had painted black. So I'm taking that same color and I'm using a chippy brush and I'm doing a good coat but not a full coverage coat of paint on the top. Then I made some decals with my Cricut and the you know the thing about the book stack is though I use a smaller it's like I have to do like 0.6 is the size of the font that I'm doing because it's a small area and anyway sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle bus to get that on there but it works out in the end and I do try to help prep it by giving it the base coat on that stencil because I'm stenciling the letters on. I don't know if I said that, the words I mean. And now I'm doing basically the same thing for the other two book stacks. I'm just weeding out the little vinyl stencil that I made and applying it to the front of this little book stack, each book of the book stack. And then I'm painting the base coat and then I go back in with the coat of the paint that I really want on the front. And I did that for each of them. And then I just go back with the color that I want and that's how I make those letters pop. So look, it comes out, like I said, the wood's not super smooth, but you know, I don't mind the rustic primitive look. So it works well for me. If it doesn't work for you, maybe you really, really sand it. Maybe you put down a base coat of like Mod Podge or something to smooth it out. You know, you can do, find some workarounds to help it turn out the way you like. Now for the top of that book, book set, bloop, that book stack, I'm taking another little honeycomb pattern that I 
print it out with my Cricut and I'm going to apply that to the top. Then I'm going to take some more of that Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze. And I'm going to use that sponge dauber brush again and just kind of pounce up and down to cover the top of the book where that stencil is. And then when it's done before it's dry, I pull back the little stencil and I'm going to hot glue the books together just so they don't move around too much. And I'm going to take a little bit of jute twine and just make a simple little knot. I'm not even making a bow, it's just a simple knot on the top. And look at how cute and adorable <laughs> this turned out. I just love the simplicity of it. It says, be humble and kind. Now, could I have centered the letters better? Sure. But you know what? It's okay. It all, it still looks cute. For this DIY, I'm taking this little wood piece and some Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze. And I got that wood piece in a little set from Target Dollar Spot on clearance. And I had to use several, several coats of the chalk paint to cover it. It just, it needed several coats, y'all. <laughs> so then I'm going to apply a coat of Mod Podge on the top. And, you know, sometimes I get a little happy with that Mod Podge and put a little too much. And so then all you have to do is just take off the excess and put it back into the container. Easy. Then... I had this from a Dollar Tree calendar and I'm taking some water and I'm just adding it around like, oh, you see me, I'm just like kind of dabbing some water all the way around. And I let that sit for just a second to kind of soften it up because what I'm going to go back and do is tear it. Instead of cutting it and making it a clean cut all the way around, I thought it would just look cuter if I kind of tore it. So... Um, you see me just pulling the pieces. Some of them need to soak a little bit longer. Some need a little bit more water. But I just do that around the whole thing until I like how it looks. Then I position it on top of that wood piece and take some parchment paper on top. And I use my heat press to reactivate that Mod Podge. And y'all, that's the easiest way to do this. So simple, so easy, but it really adds a little cute touch to my tiered tray. All right, y'all, this is the last DIY. I have, a, this is actually, you'll see in a second, but it's a Reese's Puffs cereal box. <laughs> and I just cut out a little stencil for myself of a honeycomb, not a honeycomb, a beehive. And I'm just cutting it out of this cardboard. And I'm painting the <laughs> cereal box side that you can see. Well, I'm actually, I'm gonna paint both sides with Waverly, I think it's not, that's not Waverly paint. Anyway, I'm painting it black. And like I said, I did both sides. Then I took some twine and I just cut off some strips and now I'm layering the strips on with some hot glue all the way across. And I am going past the edges of it because I'm just gonna trim it down with scissors later. I think it makes it look neater that way instead of really trying to have to focus on having the right length, the right size, the right number, all that kind of stuff. We're just going to bypass that and just add these little strips on and cut it later. And here I'm just taking some scissors and just trimming that down following the pattern of the cardboard. I'm making a little mini wreath and I need a little bee to go on it. So I cut out three circles with my little punch press thing in black, three circles in black, three circles in yellow, and then I'm folding them in half. And I'm just taking some Elmer's school glue the purple one because that's what i have on hand and i'm going to be attaching these all together a black one yellow one black one yellow one black and captain came to help now back to the beehive i am taking some more twine and i'm going to go around the edge of the beehive and once i make it all the way around i'm going to go in with a second layer of twine around the edge just to kind of build it up a little bit more. Then I'm taking another piece of twine and I'm making a little circle on the front and I do go around it twice. Yep, you see me there going for a second pass. And then I'm taking some black paint and I'm painting the inside of the little opening of the beehive. And I have Captain's help for this messy bow and I'm just layering down some black and white and yellow ribbons and then I'm going to use a piece of twine to tie them all together. 
and I'm going to hot glue using a generous amount of hot glue. I'm going to hot glue that beehive to the front there. I'm going to add a little bit more hot glue on the back because like I said, I don't want this going anywhere. And then I take that bee and I place it down. I use some parchment paper to make some little wings and I'm just going to hot glue them down right onto the beehive like so. And then I'm going to hot glue that messy bow in that other corner. And again, using a lot of hot glue because did, for whatever reason, this messy bow did not want to stay glued to the wreath. I thought I was going to have to use some twine to like wrap it around or something. But anyway, ended up getting it to stick. And then I made a little finger bow and I put that in the middle. And y'all, this is how it turned out. <laughs> I think it looks super cute. Although, kind of looking at it now, I think maybe I need to add some antenna for that bee. But anyway... It looks super cute. I love how it turned out and I think it's gonna look fabulous on my tiered tray. Here is another look at all of the pieces that I made today, minus the gnome because I don't know where I put that. Maybe I gave it away, but anyway, this little piece right here, the BU, that little um, honeycomb thing with the let it be next to it, the beehive wreath, it's my favorite. The book stack, the little um, rub on transfer thing and the be kind sign. I just think they look great. You'll have to let me know which one is your favorite in the com. Oh, hello, Captain again. My goodness, he's in this video a lot today. But um, don't forget, check out the playlist, check out the host channels. Um, there's lots of great inspo, and you don't want to miss it. Thank y'all so, so much for watching my video. And if you got this far, leave me a B emoji in the comments, and um, I'm going to go like drink something warm <laughs> to try to take care of my throat. But um, I appreciate the company. I appreciate all of y'all who have liked and subscribed to my channel. And if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on TikTok or Instagram, my handle there is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. <laughs> Bye y'all.